Hey, it's Nikachu, and today we are gonna take a look at a game where cheating at Magic the Gathering backfires. Our hero today is Tom the Boss Ross, and he's gonna be playing against our villain, infamous shuffle cheater, Jared Betcher. Tom is playing his signature deck, Infect, which features infect creatures that deal damage to the opponent in the form of poison counters. Now in Magic, our life total starts at 20 and the objective is to reduce it down to zero. But the difference is with poison counters is that if you take 10 or more, you're dead. So it's like playing against someone with half their life total. But the infect creatures are small and fragile. That's why we're gonna buff them up with pump spells and also protect them with our counter spells. So if you're not careful, the game could be over before it even gets started. Jared, on the other hand, is playing Jeskai Delver. The namesake card of the deck is a 1-1 creature for 1 mana, but at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may reveal that card if an instant or sorcery card is revealed this way, transform Delver of Secrets into a 3-2 flying creature, which is a pretty good rate. What are the odds of revealing an instant or sorcery? Well, pretty good because this deck is loaded with removal spells like Lightning Bolt, Sorcery, to plowshares and counter spells like days force of will and spell pierce to control the opponent but jared's secret weapon his signature move is shuffle cheating whenever his opponents have to search their deck and then present it to him to get shuffled he'll spot a land on the bottom of the library shuffle it directly to the top and then keep it there. No matter how much more he shuffles or cuts the deck, his opponents will always draw a land. The idea is if his opponents draw too many lands and not enough spells to play, they'll lose because they'll run out of things to do. So can Jared Batcher scum another opponent to victory? Or will this just be another day in the office for Tom the Boss Ross? Let's take a look at the action. And an X. He's used to playing around all the stuff. He knows all their tricks. It's all straightforward. A lot of people play Delver. Not a lot of people play Infect. I can't imagine that Jared has much practice against this deck. He's going to start things off with the Delver of Secrets off of a Volcanic Island. Tom will draw a card for the turn. You can see he has a Glistener Health in his hand already. A couple copies of Blight Agent as well. It's always a delight to watch Ross kind of bob and weave around these removal spells and get the job done. He's done it before. We'll see if he can do it again. And he does start off with the 1-1 one, one Infect creature that will get countered via Daze. Yeah, sometimes that's all you need with this Delver deck is to stop their one threat and leave them with a bunch of semi-useless pump spells in their hand. So both players had their ideal starts. Jared comes out of the gates with the Delver of Secrets. Tom, on the other hand, replies with the Glistener Elf. However, the Delver deck always punishes you for being light on mana. Jared returned his Tropical Island back to his hand to play the alternate casting cost on Days, which says counter target spell unless its controller pays one. Tom Ross is tapped out, so goodbye, Glistener Elf. Jared then takes his turn, reveals Days on top of his library to flip his Delver of Secrets into a 3-2 flying insectile aberration. A perfect start for the Delver player, but Tom now knows that Days is in Jared's hand, and he will be playing accordingly. And especially if you have a Delver of Secrets on turn one, especially if it transforms on turn two naturally, uh, you, you definitely have everything you need to just take a commanding lead in the game. And Sectile Aberration does show up. It gets into the red zone. Ross is already down to 17. Betcher revealed a daze, so Tom is going to have to play around that daze. Tom will play a forest. This is another copy of Glistener Elf to try to play around daze to the best of his ability. Looks like that's going to work out, so Betcher will untap and draw here. Picks up a copy of Forcible. You see a Misty Rainforest in his hand. He can play that as a second land if he'd like, and he will. See if he'd like to attack first, maybe cast that lightning bolt in, that is in his hand, but he will serve in for three here. Put Ross down to 14. You see Tom in his hand, he's got a spell piercing and invigorate hanging out over there. Betcher will go with lightning bolt to try to get the glistener up off the table, and Tom says that's fine. Yeah, spell pierce not much help here when he knows that Jared has a daze. Doesn't really want to walk into that. He could have used the invigorate, but 
I do like saving that when you already have a few other creatures in your hand, whereas you don't have a lot of pump spells. Yeah, creatures, something Tom has plenty of. Right. Uh, I believe he has two blight agents, and he just drew a copy of Ink Moth Nexus, so creatures don't look to be much of a problem here, but he is under the gun. He is being attacked for three damage a turn. Yep. So he does have to be a little bit weary of that, and of course, Lightning Bolts will give Betcher some reach if he does find another one of those. Now, Tom is going to play Ink Moth Nexus. He's going to deploy a blight agent again, playing around days here. We'll see if Betcher has some interest in maybe casting Force of Will. You can see in Jared Tanner, he does have his Batter Skull, but that's not going to be very useful this game. No, both a little too slow and the lifelink not incredibly relevant. Betcher kind of giving this a long thought, I think, on if he's supposed to Force of Will this or not. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of awkward. You, you sort of want to, but on the other hand, Tom does have the Ink Moth Nexus, mm -hmm. so... And he will force that. So Tom casts the Blighted Agent, still holding up a mana to play around Jared's days. So with the days aging like sour milk, Jared pitches it to pay the alternate casting cost on Force of Will, which counters the Blighted Agent. And he will force that. So kind of what's happening here is Jared's fighting over all the creatures. Yeah. And so you have to imagine if Tom finally gets one of these creatures in play, he's just going to, you know, invigorate, invigorate, try to kill you. Uh, assuming that, you know, there's probably not any counter magic hanging out over there, though Betra did draw a lightning bolt for the turn. So Ross will untap after taking three more. He is at 11 now and draws a copy of Vines of Vastwood. See the Verdant Catacombs in his hand. Curious how many cards Betra has in the grip. I believe it's two. Yeah, you kind of see the power of the Infect deck here where Tom could go for nine poison right now. Yep. And even after getting his first three threats dealt with. I mean, if he did that, he would walk into Daze. And, well, I guess he forced a will to weigh the Daze. Yeah, but. the Daze is actually gone. He doesn't have to worry about that now. Yeah. Doesn't mean there's not another one hiding out in Betcher's hand. Right. I definitely understand what you're saying there. Gonna go get a Trop. Go down to 10 to get that. Yeah, just this inf this Infect deck is a little bit more resilient than you might otherwise think. It's like, oh, well, you know, just kill their first couple creatures and you're fine. And... Jared, to his credit, has had a pretty good draw, has navigated out of the early game pretty well, and Tom still has a lot going on. It's a blighted agent. Uh, what I want to see here is if Tom is going to fire up this ink bomb to try to sneak a point in. I think that's pretty good, especially since he has eight points of pump in his hand. Uh, if, if the Nexus gets in there for a point, next turn it's relatively safe to go in with blighted agent for nine, especially with spell pierce backup. He's moving in. Betcher says, I'll take one Infect right now. We could have seen a Lightning Bolt on the Nate Moth Nexus. Makes things a little bit interesting as Tom's going to get out his own yeah. token. Love it. That's that's pretty good. And says, I got one on you. Got to get nine more. Betcher draws a copy of Delver of Secrets. His hand again, he's got a Batter Skull, he's got a Bolt. The Delver that he's just drawn for the turn. And the other card, I believe, is a Spell Pierce. So no hard counter magic here. And trust me, Tom has had to bob and weave around Spell Pierce before. Ross is down to seven. We'll pass the turn back. We'll bet you. He's trying to hang on here. So Ross draws a card. It's a copy of Verdant Catacombs. So Jared pulls his signature move and stacks a Verdant Catacombs on top of Tom's deck as he's shuffling it. But is that even a good idea? It completely contradicts the strategy of the Delver deck, which tries to take advantage of the fact that you're choked on mana with counter spells like Daze and Spell Pierce. But of course, cheaters don't think about strategy. They're just thinking about cheating. Will the boss move in is the question. I mean, the clock is ticking, right? He's yep. at seven life. Delver makes it four next turn. Uh, he could potentially block with Inkbot Nexus, but I don't think that's what he wants to be doing. And if, if Betcher has something like Lightning Bolt, Swords to Plowshares, it's, it's kind of scary, right? But I feel like Tom is the expert in navigating through these situations. He's pretty good at figuring out when it's time to pull the trigger. Right. You know, what he's probably doing right now is he's kind of running through the combination of cards and instead of like, okay, Blue Light Red Delver, what could they have in their hand? Yeah. You know, like, what is a card that he hasn't cast yet? Does he have Force Will plus Blue card? Can I beat that? Maybe yes, maybe no. He's going to fire up Ink Moth Nexus right now. He's going to serve him both these creatures. This is an Invigorate over there. 
So Jared hoped to flood Tom Ross out with lands. Little did he know that Tom needed the land because with the fifth land drop, he could play all the spells in his hand. Yeah, not totally relevant. I've definitely heard stories about the Infect decks taking down people with like 15 points of normal damage from Noble Hierarch or whatever. Tom has done it. <laughs> right. Vetcher's gonna move in, cast a lightning bolt there. See if Tom wants the vines or if he wants the spell pierce. It's very important how he sequences these. Yeah, I agree. I think you want to play the pump spell, which forces Jared to react, because if you if you just go for spell pierce, uh, Jared doesn't have to do anything. He could just take the infect damage, yep. right? Uh, whereas if you go for vines on the creature that you're also invigorating, if he has a source of plowshares, then he has to use it, and then you can potentially just win the game on the spot with a spell pierce. Really smart to sack the fetch line first before making a move, because let's say that Tom does cast you know, this finds and he has a fetch line available, Jared fights over it, and then when Tom tries to crack his fetch line, days happens. So if all these pump spells resolve, Tom is attacking for exactly 10 poison. Right, you know, so it's really, really smart that he sacked the fetch land first, and then says, all right, I'm gonna vines this in response. Now Jared's gonna sack his fetch land. Yeah, I mean, it, it could also be like a stifle or something, yep. you know, like Tom wants to get all the information that he can, like, am I gonna have this spell pierce available before yep. I decide whether or not to vines? So Jared's gonna sacrifice his fetch land. He's gonna go get a Tundra. He's gonna cast a Spell Pierce. Tom is gonna look at his Spell Pierce and says, I'm gonna counter your We're, we're all in. And, and that's it. Jared says, I am beat. Tom Ross works his way through a couple bolts, couple counter spells. So in absolute fear, Jared responds to the Vines of Vastwood by playing Spell Pierce. But Tom, with his last land in play, the land Jared conveniently put on top of his deck was used to pay for Spell Pierce to counter Jared's Spell Pierce. The boss won the War of the Stack and killed Jared for 10 poison. Jared Betcher scoops it up. I betcha he didn't see that one coming. This game would go down as a literal example of a cheater cheating themselves. Congratulations, you played yourself. Well, that's my video for today. What was your favorite part of this game? Let me know in the comments section below. Smash like for cheaters getting destroyed, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel, or your next starting hand will be seven lands.